Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel and the Angevin. It's been uh, it's been a little bit since the last episode. Uh, I was on vacation that uh, got prolonged unexpectedly due to car troubles. So instead of the planned eh, one week of no content, kind of turned into two. So I apologize for that, but uh, hey, I hope that gave people enough chance to kind of catch up with the series and go through those first, uh, what was it, 19 episodes? So anyway, we are back now, and one of the things I did in preparation, and I need to address this, to being gone for a while was pre-recording, and then I would batch record a lot. So I would sit here and play and record for three, four, five hours. That would break down to three to five episodes, depending. And, and then batch edit, which, you know, is another, it's basically one hour of recording, playing time, roughly translates into um, an hour of editing, you throw in rendering and uploading, it's basically two hours per one hour. So, anyway, in the editing, I, I saw my little mistake from a couple of episodes ago. And when it came to the culture, and this was obviously uh, when it was the previous culture head to Folk. This was for Folk the Third. It was Folk the Second. And part of it here was I put in Castle Keepers instead of Chanson de Geste, which was something I wanted. And that was honestly just a mistake. Uh, that wasn't actually something I wanted to do, but I wasn't able to address it until now. Also down to the fact that just the way batch recording and editing happens, I noticed it in editing and went, oh, that's not great. And then obviously the comments came and I went, yeah, I know, I know, I know. So what's going to happen? And now I do have a little bit of headcanon that plays into the story a little bit. So if we go back to our previous man here in Folk the Greedy, of course, he was more, he wasn't very martial. He was more focused on domain building. And so castle builders actually fit really well with him and with the, the history. If you look at someone like um, Henry or Richard in the Angevin and Plantagenet dynasty, they were prolific castle builders. So I figured that fit. Chanson de Geste, and this is how it's going to work now, fits much more with Duke Folk III. Now, yes, he's also into learning and stuff like that, but he's a crusader, he's an aspiring blade master, and he's a little bit more martial than his father. So, he will reform the Angevin culture once we reach 2000 prestige and add Chanson de Geste back in. That's not the optimal way to do it, because, honestly, I kind of messed up there, but uh, that's okay. As I've always said, it's not about optimal play, and for any of you old school Realm Builder Guy channel subscribers, you may remember the Sparta series with Imperator Rome were really early. I think it's in episode two, maybe. I, I wasn't paying attention and did a massive no-no in attacking someone we had gone to truce with. And that really hit heavy penalties on uh, Sparta. Now, it turned out that was kind of intriguing because it added a massive challenge to the playthrough and ended up being a really cool story. Now, this isn't that, of course. That was huge. But if you want to, you can always check out uh, the Sparta series as well. So enough of that. Of course, we are in a war. Uh, this is a dissolution war where the attackers... Uh, are against our allies here in the Kingdom of Galicia, dealing with a dissolution war. And we have joined that, and we want to make sure that the Galicians are at least placated. We don't want them to be dissolved as such. We want to send troops down there. That does also increase Duke Folk III's prestige, and kind of plays into the fact that he's an aspiring blade master. And he kind of, he has very high prowess. Like I've explained before, he's kind of more a tournament fighter than a battlefield strategist. He kind of wants to think of himself as a battlefield strategist. He is ambitious and arbitrary. So that might play into that eventually. Though 
not at this point just yet. And the interest, of course, for the Angevines, let's raise our armies, for the Angevines in Iberia are, of course, there because of Aragon, where, I always want to say Aragorn, but Aragon, where our brother, King Joffrey, is the king. He's not going to have children. He's still betrothed, the forever betrothed. Somebody pointed that out, and it, it didn't even click, but... Princess Constance of France is forever betrothed to him. They're not getting married. Why? He's a eunuch who obviously cannot have children. Um, and so they are not actually married, which is just interesting. They're just kind of cohabitating. And the primary heir is Duke Folk III. So his interests in um, Iberia are very real and very, very strong. So we are now going to take our little army and we are going to land them over here in Coruña. Now there is a large army, enemy army there. We might be too late. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, depending on how that plays out here, we may move further down south to the coast. Uh, we'll kind of see where things are once our soldiers are on their way. See, there's another uh, troop going there. So we're actually going to move f way further south on the Galician coast. And we're going to um, focus on that and then march up north. But again, we're just kind of seeing where this goes. Mental break. Too busy. By God, petitioners from the realm have been... Queuing up lately, this work feels endless. Yet another one steps forward, evidently a distressed merchant of some kind. You think you can wheedle a royal stamp out of me, Burger? I am a duke. The merchant gops at me, blinking rapidly in shock. Was it something I said? Maybe a new cloak wouldn't make me feel better. Um, drink. This is too much. I'm the duke. I can do this. Um, let's see. He's greedy, so he's not going to spend the money. But turning to the cups. Hmm. There was really nothing... Uh, nothing standing out in his history that would push him there. Or he is Duke. He can do this. It's just his mental strength. He's going to keep on pushing. That's, of course, putting him now a little more in more danger. Curse undone. The twists and turns of fate have not always been to my advantage. God knows I was cursed the day I met Geoffrey. Today, however, that curse has been lifted. Fate has smiled upon me and brought that evil fool to his grave. Not one day too soon. Okay, enough of that. Oh, peers are off to play. My son and heir Henri, along with Mathilde and Richard, uh, has been invited to gathering at Count Simon. Count Simon? Sure. Hmm, all three of them? Those are all three of my children. No. We, no, I'm sorry. I'm not sending all of my children to one place. That simply sounds like a bad idea. All right, we are going to change course now. No, actually, we're going to continue staying south, and we're going to hit Coimbra and try to knock one of these rebel factions out of the war. And keep an eye on what is happening up here. Uh, it's only three months before Coruña falls. We are going to move down south here now to Castel Branco. A range of betrothal to the implacable folk. I propose a betrothal between my son and heir, Adam de Normandy, and your niece, Agnes Plantagenet. Well, it would bring us a little closer... Uh, sure. Uh, this marriage will not result in an alliance. That's okay. Being on the good side of the King of England right now might not be a bad thing. I have prowled through the documents, both ancient and of less certain providence. I uh, finally enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord of the Earldom of Sable. See it done. It will cost 93. King Ralph loses 20 opinion. That's fine. We definitely want those uh, Norman or Anjou holdings as our claims, because eventually I want to go to war with England. That may have to wait 
until something happens with Aragon. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, we're we're sticking down here in Iberia. Uh-oh, the war is going really, really poorly, mainly because they lost their capital. So we'll see if we can get a little bit back for him. So we did win that siege, took a little cash. And now we will continue moving up here. The seductive rival, Nomdun Peep. I shout as I read the letter. That contemptuous rival of mine, Benoit, I spit on your name. Not only have you used trickery and charm to convince my vassal, Countess Eloise, to marry you, no, you've also turned Countess Eloise against me. Your poisonous tongue is spreading lie after lie about me. You don't love Eloise, you just want me to suffer. I must convince Eloise of how treacherous Benoit is. Yes, we will do that. Lost distrustful opinion towards you. Oh, and no longer disloyal. Interesting. A few more allies have joined the war, including Castile. So this could really change the tide of war. And in the meantime, our troops will just go through and kind of ransack the Galician countryside. A secret exposed. Mayor saint de Châteauroux has accused my uncle Count Geoffroy of having committed sodomy together with his lover Roger. This cannot be what the Lord intended. God will judge these sinners. I see the enemy is moving south, so we're going to break this siege off and head north. Don't really want to be caught in combat here against a larger force that is chasing us. Secret exposed. Vassal Prince Bishop Fraga has copulated with his soulmate Mayor Sophie. Ooh. Another secret exposed, although there's no way to conclusively prove it. My Chancellor, Prince Bishop Falco, has brought forward evidence that Marie is not the daughter of Mayor Adrian of Saint-Omer, but that she was fathered by none other than him. Ooh, I am lost for words. Okay, we'll keep moving this army north till we basically meet up with the larger host. In hopes that we don't get caught. Yeah, meeting up with the Castilians. Well, one, it'll... See? It'll push them to disengage and head back south. We're just going to join that siege, head up to Coruña, and then call it a day. So we're going to move up to Coruña. We're going to let these guys all head south. The Castilians and the Galicians. And maybe push for a decisive battle. We'll keep an eye on that battle, if and when it happens. Kind of chasing them around, trying to engage them right now in mountains. And there we have it. A battle has been joined. The Galician and Castilian forces are hanging tough. They just have the overwhelming man force power, and they will win at the Battle of Monterey. So that was a decisive and strong victory. If we catch... Kurunya back, which uh, will be done here in less than two months, that will definitely change the title of the ward. I mean, the Castilians coming in was really one of the major ones. What I'll do here is we'll actually move our forces up here. Count Robert II has passed away. You can no longer sway him. Okay, we're going to have to take a look at these here. We need a guardian for Richard Plantagenet. So, let's see. He is definitely more martial. Uh, Gérard de Noget, our commander, he would be an excellent tutor. We're going to move these guys all the way across here and siege down an enemy's capital. We have such strong forces up here. I am not worried about them coming up and causing us much harm. We've been invited to a feast right now. We're just focused on these wars, so not going to partake in any feasts. See, they're probably going to win this siege down here. If they're smart, they're going to head down south and try to crush that army again. That does give us clear cover here in Pravia to siege down this key fort. A helpful warning. I've received a missive from Duke Henri of Burgundy. Claims that Count Thibault, my vassal, has requested support in a plot against me. There's nothing more valuable than more... There's nothing I value more than loyalty. Henri's letter reads... Hence why I share this with you. 
Hmm, Tibor. I will confront Tibor in person. You can see they're heading down south. We've got a new learning lifestyle perk. An insulting accusation. When I present Duke Henri's letter to Count Thibault, it is first met with confusion, then anger. You believe his word over mine? Have I not always been lo a loyal servant? <laughs> not really. His indignation plants a seed of doubt in my mind. Perhaps I acted too quickly. I should make amends before I ruin this relationship forever. Yes, in fact, I wish to reward you for your loyalty. Oh, absolutely not. You have always been such a good servant. We spend 150 prestige. That's great. One thing I don't really want to spend because we have a goal. See the Castilian and Galician forces. They will meet in another pitched battle down south here in Braganza and win it. And in the meantime here, we are just three months away from Pravia becoming ours. That's right. We've got a new perk here. Learning on the job. 20% counselor's primary skills added to your own. That's... That's quite nice. Got a nice bump across the board. And Folk is looking fantastic. I seized Lucky Galician coin after the Siege of Prabia. Excellent. And now we can also move these troops down south and join that siege. That should be a... I'm not going to say a winner, but definitely a key next siege in this. Which will be done here in a few days. I wonder if that'll push it to 100%. Uh, 96, so close. Alright, let's move down south here towards Porto. Looks like there may be another battle there, but if nothing else, another key siege. And that ticking war score is just going to continue to play in our and our allies' favor. Stone of Glass. As I struggle to make out the tiny letters on the scroll, before me, I feel a headache building once again. Why describes it this on writing such small symbols? I squint and try again. Nothing short of a miracle. The aid of a stone of glass, even old men struggling with bad eyesight could read with ease. Antoine, I require your assistance. You gain 300 learning, lifestyle experience, and Antoine gets a weak hook. Mm, not sure about that. I need none of these stones. I need one of these stones, sorry. Sell everything which is impossible to read. No, he definitely likes learning, so he's going to get one of them stones. Okay, we're going to also engage down south. This, this battle victory should do it, and it does at 100%. And the war is over. We can disband our troops and head back home. So, arrange a betrothal. Duke Henri, a proposed betrothal. A patrol between my son, Henri de Bourgogne, and your niece, Marguerite Plantagenet. Not results in an alliance, but it kind of spreads things out. Con congenital trait. I mean, it's our niece. I don't really care. That went a little too fast. So I'm going to hit pause here. Everything happening way too fast. All right, so that war is done. We protected the interests, our interests in Iberia, as well as the interests of one of our key allies. We do have a few prisoners here to ransom. And I do want the money without a doubt. And that will bring in an extra 150 uh, to our coffers. The Age of the World. I've been studying the ancient religious texts and the writings of scholars. They all seem to agree that the world will end 6,000 years after its creation. By my calculations, we are less than a century away. However, my bishop, Antoine, urges me to keep it to myself. Leave it to the clergy and avoid panic. What if your calculations are wrong? A reasonable point. I agree. I, I definitely agree. I should consult with more priests? No. I agree, Antoine. Of course, that, you know, we're known for our dedication to our faith, not necessarily our prestige. Without care, disposal. Riding through the streets of Anjou, having dealt with some trivial errands in the town, my entourage and I hear a loud crash. Little investigation shows it was some burger or other throwing a clay pot from their window, uncaring of whether it might hit someone below. Callous, yes, but what can you expect? At any rate, it's hardly something worth much further thought. These peons. I could have hurt someone. Hmm. 
And we lost a counselor in Hugh. All right, so we need a new steward. So let's see. Our vassal, Count Raoul of Isodun, is a known criminal, but he would be okay as a steward. There's no really powerful. I mean, Countess Denise would be a powerful vassal. Secret exposed. Although there's no way to co conclusively prove it, my Chancellor Prince. Bishop Falco has brought forward evidence that I got is not the daughter, it's one of his, another one with Mayor Sophie. I am lost for words, my friends. So Countess Denise, let's see, she's an insightful thinker. Not really, we've got a fortune builder, Midas Touched. It's not bad, Thierry. He's a peasant leader. Let's put a peasant in charge. I don't mind that too much. We have a mystic here. As at court. Yes, Thierry, we're going to assign him. And we are going to continue to promote our culture. Excellent. Now, one thing we can do here is uh, modify and propose this to King Philippe. This was a suggestion in the comments, and it makes sense. We can offer him something in exchange um, for granting war declaration. Now we can go with high as far as our levies. That would give him a levy contribution of an extra 1400 or bump up our taxes. Our feudal tax levy will go up by 2.8. Uh, we've got a really good income. So I think we can do that and we can gain... Sanction war declaration. So the vassal can declare war regardless of the liege's crown authority. The vassal pays 50% less for cast a spell eye within the realm. So we're going to modify the contract. Actually, what we're not... No, we're not going to do money. We're going to do levies. Why? Because Folk is greedy. But he's a little more into war. So he'd rather part with levies than money. That fits more his character than giving more money. So we're going to modify our vassal contract... And with that, things get interesting. Circumstances have made it necessary for me to make the following alterations to my contract. I trust that you will find these changes to be fair. Yes, we have the sanctioned war declaration, high levy contribution. So now, my friends, things have become more interesting. So we can declare war here in Aquitaine for our own claims and we can do that. The cost is 45 in prestige so we can expand internally. Uh, what else do we have? We have Flanders that really doesn't do much for us in Gascon and that would uh, the Duchy of Gascon be there. Um, let's see. There's really... I don't know about that. All your Glory Hound vassals gain 10. I don't know if we really want to necessarily strengthen her that much. Plus the cost is really high in prestige. That would not be of interest. Here's another one. Again, not not of extreme interest. Are we looking for King Ralph the Greedy? I mean, look at this. We have 21,000. He has no allies. We can go for the Earldom of Sable, at which point we gain that contested title, which we could do anyway because it's an external war. Hmm... Doing that, that's, I mean, he's got more money. And he's got no major external allies, whereas we have a lot of allies we could call upon here. Um, but he would put his might against us really, really early. Now, we can ask our head of faith for claims. And this now becomes interesting. 
So, what can we add here? We can gain a claim on the Duchy of Normandy. Ooh. That's a big one. That is a big one to gain. All of Normandy. Ooh, that's... That's a big one. We can also go for Auvergne. That is significantly more doable. Or Gascon to the south. Expand that way. But a claim on Normandy. That I do really, really like, to be perfectly honest. I like that. And we can spend 400 uh, sorry, piety to gain a press claim on the Duchy of Normandy. Of course, press claims, our heir inherits that. You know what? We are going to request that claim. I think adding Normandy to our claims is an excellent, excellent move. All right, now we're going to move further down south here. Now we can add Limousin anyway, and we can start uh, gaining some claims down here. Onis, Angoulême. So let's start with Angoulême. And uh, we're just going to push for Limousin. And I think going to war there would not be a bad thing. Take a look at Aquitaine. It's allied with really not much there. 3,600. We could even take them on ourselves. We look at our allies. We have Bernard, the Smelly of Armagnac. We have Du Guichard, the foreigner of Toulouse. Poitiers, for that's internal. Galicia, Burgundy, and Geoffrey the Clueless of Aragon. I mean, we could roll up Aquitaine really quickly and start expanding that direction. This is going to take a while anyway, and just slowly start chipping away, and then eat up some of these here as well. Actually, actually, I think what we're going to do here instead, we're going to do that instead. We're going to go on Belac, because if we declare war on Aquitaine, get Limousin, then we're going to be on truce here anyway, and that claim's just going to sit there. Instead, we can start putting claims here and expand this direction. I think that is the correct course of action. We are going to uh, do this, declare a war here. But before I do that, I'll do my typical thing, and we will move... Where are we going to, to here? Where we're going to raise our troops. And we are going to go back to expansionist policies right away. And we can call in some of our allies. I think Toulouse. It's going to cost 150 prestige. Adding Toulouse and Armagnac. Oh, that's painful. I think that'll be enough. Adding Toulouse into the mix, uh, that really helps us. Then we've got a strong ally. Recognize your claim on the Duchy of Normandy. Excellent. So once these guys are all raised, we will head south once our allies are in a position to join. There come 3,000. And now we can move down south here to Limousin and force that. If they want to engage us in here, I'm perfectly fine with that. We have a force now of eh, a total of 6,000 in this war. And we don't really need more. They are besieging down here in Toulouse. Don't really know why... The army of Toulouse is sitting in La Marche. That makes absolutely no sense. But again, it is CK3's AI, which is sometimes, uh, let's say, questionable. A new translation. More than anything, my quest to be a learned man is teaching me how much I do not yet know. What more, there must be so much knowledge that has been lost to the ages. As books fall apart or languages are forgotten, perhaps I could contribute 
by making a new translation of one of the classic works. Although, what would I even translate? Studying the heavens through Ptolemy's Almagest, or Almagest. Elements, Euclid's Mathematical Treatise. This sounds too hard. No. Um, heavens or treatise? Uh, elements. Let's go with elements. Eski, Metcourt, my spy master has come to me with grave news. We do not know who someone is plotting to kill me. We must stop the villain behind this. Okay, so we have gained Limousin. And now, let's just head straight for their capital. And take care of that. So they've gained a little bit here in Toulouse. They're not really bothering us. So if we just siege down most of Aquitaine, that will already get us uh, where we need to be. Impressive folk. I've been corresponding with your Chancellor, Prince Bishop Folco. Must say that I've come to see you in a new light. Perhaps you are even someone that one day I would be proud to call my friend, Prince Robert of Normandy. Sure. I now have a claim on Normandy, but um, yeah, we can be buddies. All right, time for a new lifestyle learning perk. Sanction loopholes. Buy, you can use the buy claim interaction. Interaction that allows a character to buy unpressed claims in exchange for piety. Uh, excellent. So we will do that and unlock that one before we head to Scholar next. My translation of the elements is coming along, but one section in the version I am copying from gives me pause. My scribes insist that the words on the page mean, as we hold two feet in spirits rising edges of hunter. That cannot be right, can it? I could come up with something more fitting. Uh, we translate the text exactly as written. No. Oh, the meaning is obvious. Let me handle this. Translation quality will improve significantly. Or we do this. Hmm. I can come up with something fitting. And we gain 150 prestige back. Which is basically getting... Calling to lose into war. That's, that's basically what that is. I'm having the notes of my translation of the elements read back to me when... My lord, please forgive me, but did you fall asleep? Heavens above, this classic is a piece of absolute dribble. Nevertheless, I will force myself through it. I'm not sure about that one. My scribes can take on more of the responsibility. I need a break from all of this. Um, yeah, we'll just take a break real quick. If I'm falling asleep, yeah, I just, just need a quick moment. In the meantime, our treasury is growing quite nicely here. And they're expanding the south, but the ticking war score is still on our side. Now they're moving up north. I wouldn't mind if they engage with us. We've got two sieges here. Three months left in Saint-Ton. And in Angoulême, less than a month. If he cuts over towards us, I'm hoping Toulouse will break off and join. No, he's moving towards La Marche. Oh, he's trying to regain Limousin. But by the time he does that, we'll have these two areas besieged. The constant effort to translate the elements is tiring. The relentless focus, understanding, and creativity required drains me as I move ever closer to its completion. Just a few more pages to nine, and a few more in the morning. I must seclude myself from all other distractions until this is done. Uh, the book can wait for a while. No, no, I'm going to focus on doing this. Okay, so I'm just going to wait for this siege to be done, and then the war score will be on our side. And we have achieved 100% war score... And we can enforce our demands and disband all. Now we do have some extra holdings here in Limousin. And with that, we will actually give away Limousin. We will grant this to... Hmm. We grant this title to Henri. Our heir, he gains 40 opinion of you, becomes your vassal. Uh, you have parochial vassal stance. The penalty being above your domain limit will be reduced. I may as well grant it to him just so he has it. You can already learn how to be a lord this way. Again, not always the perfect way to do it, but uh, I don't really care. I think this is exactly what 
mm, Fulk would like to do. Give his son a task. Kind of see if Henri is up to it or not. He's rational, he's craven, he's charming. He needs to grow up a little bit. And making him the Count of Limousin might be exactly what is needed. Top of that now, we need to, of course, increase our control. And we actually still have a place lacking control in Chalon. So we'll send him over there to deal with that. A specific phrase from the elements has been frustrating my translation efforts for days. I've even started muttering it to myself sometimes. Still struggling with that one, are you? My bishop hefts a weighty old tome. One simply needs to know where to look. Help me uncover this, Antoine. Hmm. No games, just tell me what I am looking for. Nah. Let's, let's see if you can help. Uh, let's see, we've got here, uh, Duke Bernard the Smelly would like to marry your niece, the charming Marguerite, forming an alliance. Uh, I mean, we already have an alliance with him. Sure. Why not? I don't really care. Now, we do have a few here that we can press claims for wars. Uh, if we just take a closer look, we've got a few other ones here. Auvergne, down in the south. So, Duchess Brigida gains the contested title. Interesting. And Brigida is, of course, our wife. Hmm. Keeping that in the family, I do like that option. That's not a bad one for our wife to get Auvergne into the family. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, Belac, we can gain the county of Belac there. That's not really worth the 169. La Marche, that's also not worth the 169. But Auvergne, that would most definitely be worth it. Because if our wife then... Brigida gains the title. I mean, she has an unpressed claim. Then that would fall to our children. And it would stay within the family. And to make the Plantagenets and Angevines even more powerful within France. I think that is the perfect, perfect play. So we're going to move our army down here to Limousin. And then what we may do is end up calling in our Burgundian allies to come down south and help us in gaining this title for our wife and into the family. This is, this is perfect. So she would get the Duchy of Auvergne in the county of Auvergne. Duchess Alpais would become her vassal. Allies share a hundred prestige. Increase her opinion of her allies. Countess Matilda becomes a vassal. Gain a weak hook. Gain 100 in fame. Yes. It may cost 338 to do this. That's okay. I know we want to reform, but this is significantly better. And as long as we're still alive and kicking. If there's one thing Folk has learned from history is to not let an opportunity like this slip through his family's hands... Gaining Auvergne and keeping it and solidifying it within the Plantagenet family, that is the right play. So we will declare war, we'll raise all our armies, and Joffrey, we can call him in. Uh-huh. Call house member to war. Absolutely, we're going to do that. Call dynasty members. Nah. And we can call in Henri, 150. I don't think we need it now. Our troops are strong enough. We have a big enough army. And with Aragon coming, uh, that just makes sense. So we're going to head south here. And straight for Auvergne. Straight for their capital. And that is... What we're going to do. Tomas has died. New translation. 
So, let's see. Often I will barely notice time passing. My scribes remind me, however, my lord, it must be past midnight by now. Is it not time to rest? Yes, some sleep will do us all good. You can all keep working while I rest. Sure. Yeah. No, this is, this is the right play here. We do have a dangerous faction that has been created. Hmm, a claimant. Once the Duchy of Champagne. Or Champagne. 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 <laughs> uh, we've got a claim on Alençon. Okay, that's fine. I think it might be time to petition our liege as well. Here you can see the armies of Aragon. We're just doing carpet sieges right now across the land here. Excellent translation. My translation of the elements finally stands complete. My words rest on beautifully illuminated pages, all protected by a lavish cover as befits the work's importance. The tome has taken pride of place in my library and every priest who reads it is mightily impressed. By my efforts, some are already spreading, are already speaking of making copies on their own. The efforts have taught me much. They're an accomplished translator for 10 years. We can unlock a lifestyle perk and a translating book. We lose that. And now with the new perk, we're going to go Scholar. Scholar gives us a plus 5% learning. Um, we Hostile scheme success chance. Plus 10% personal scheme success chance, plus 10% development growth, plus 15%. And he is now a scholar as well. So dangerous faction. I think it is time we need to go and petition our liege to force this to, you know, go away. We need to negotiate some alliances here. Okay, he's not going to do that. That's fine. And we've got someone we can ransom that I had forgotten we had. Now, we cannot petition our liege because he is traveling. Well, that's annoying. Oh, no, now we can petition the liege. So we're going to go and petition. Uh, we will choose a cost 100 and dismantle the faction. Start traveling. A fresh start. I can't wait. We need to get this taken care of. Um, don't want to be caught in an internal war if we can avoid it. Say so, so. We want a siege down here. Let's move up north here and support that siege. I'm escorted into King Philippe's throne room, where he beckons for me to approach and address him. I summarize the events which have led to the open treachery of Count uh, Angelbert and his faction to install Abbot of the Champagne throne, Sh Champagne throne, and request their forced surrender by the king. After listening to the speech, he sits in silence for several moments as he mulls my petition over. Eventually, he addresses me. He makes some good arguments, but if I am to agree to your request, I will need something in return. Surely, you see it would benefit both of us. If we come to an arrangement, my king, perhaps I explain a fair offer. I accept. So we pay 150 gold. You gain 10 opinion of you. And yeah, we will fair offer. And with that, the faction has been disbanded. A knight errant. It is known that the people of Versailles seem to profess a special devotion towards their knights and their legends. My lord, the knight says, bowing his head. It is most fortunate that you and I come to meet at this crossroad, for I am in search of a marvelous fountain which water is said to cure all illnesses. If you were to help me in my quest, I shall pay homage to you. I shall never leave a knight unattended. Lead the way. Really nice armor you have there. Care to share? Okay. Bosson, make MC Reason and join our court. Um, delayed by three days? Sure, let's follow the knight. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's not a glory hound per se, but he is ambitious and sees himself as a knight. The quest. The knight leads us to a small clearing where a natural fountain glimmers. 
The light reflects on its surface with a blissful shimmer that makes the water look so bright that it feels like a second sun. Careful, a beast, a guardian. Night points at a stag, standing between us and the fountain. Don't fear, I shall fight it. Again? This, this plays into him thinking he's a knight. You gain knight errant training for 15 years. Robo has become the owner of healing water. A local hero. As we traverse the flatlands, trudging through the grass, we encounter a modest wayward shrine. Naively carved, it sports a cross at its head, and below the weathered words, here lay Saint Manasses of Orléans, blessed son of Noget le Rotrou. Saint Manasses of Orléans seems a local spiritual figure is being patronized in these parts, while well, not sanctioned by the Catholic clergy. Saint Manasses, it's a nice ring to it. You gain patronized local saint for ten years. Hmm. Cultural acceptance between the Angevin and the French increase. We had better be going. Count Thibault, I mean, he's the guy we've got issues with. So sure, we'll pay the 30. We've got the money, so it's not really a major concern. Finally enough, County of Belac is now a claim we hold. Excellent. Lowly delicacy. On our way through Courcion, we appear to have stumbled into a local food market. Everywhere, peasants and nobles of every culture and tongue clamor around exotic food stalls. The air thick with fragrances I never had imagined. My nose is drawn to a lowly stall stacked with a dish I could only dream of. I am pulled out of my haze by the halting grasp of Captain Bosson of Tard Venue de Brie. Do not waste your palate on this slop, my lord. Bowels of stew are for peasants. We have much finer foods for you. I'm the Duke, and I want my bowl of stew. Um, so, nauseating meal for two years. 10% chance of becoming ill. Uh, I can't believe I almost ate this garbage. Thank you, my good captain. Arrival. Finally, we are back home. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Available grand tours, grand tournaments. We can pay homage. Not focused on that. They're going to win that siege right there. And what I think I'm going to do is... We're going to win the siege down here in Auvergne. And once we win this siege, honestly, we can move up north. And I want to crush that army. There, he's won that. That army's going to move over this way. Okay, they are moving down south. We're almost there. There, we've won that siege. And now I want to meet this army in the field... And crush them. We will we get there before they leave? Attempt on my life. A noise like that of an assassin stumbling on a chamber pot pulled me out of my late night slumber. Spotting my would-be assailant, I shouted for my guards in a composed and manly fashion. As they arrived, a brief struggle ensued, resulting in the intruder's death. This was undoubtedly the work of that miserable bastard, Count Benoit. I will make him regret this. You can watchful for two years and all allows you to rightfully imprison Count Benoit. Okay, we want to engage this army in the field, which we will, and we will win it. Another little, little battle down there. And there we go. We have the... The war score, but first let's deal with this up here. Issues of fertility. I've seen Amede handle everything from leeches to rotting bodies, but the discomfort on his face is something entirely new. As your physician, I am the guardian of your health, he says, staring down at his shoes. It also includes your um, reproductive health. I can make a tincture that might help you and your wife. I have also read about some experimental treatments with promised results. Simple tincture seems sensible. Successfully fertility treatment for 10 years. Excellent. All right. Now we will enforce our demands. So be it. Disband all. And Duchess Brigida, our wife. Now this isn't part of Barry, of course. But Brigida is now the Duchess here, and our son, Henri of Limousin, is the heir 
to both the Duchy of Barry and Auvergne. And again, we are in line for Aragon. This was a big, let's say, power play in that sense. Um, and it works. Uh, Rome will lose land if Henri of Limousin inherits the Duchy of Auvergne. I'm not worried about that. I mean, if Limousin goes to Auvergne, I mean, it's all in one family. I don't really care about that. I'm not going to unland him and do that. I'm, I may do a little bit of switcheroo, but I, I really don't care about Limousin because eventually Aquitaine I want to just have. So that that was the, the right play because you unify all of these lands and it, it becomes quite attractive. So that's where we're going to end today's episode, which I think was definitely had a lot going on uh, from translations to wars in Iberia to expansionist wars in France to thwarting a murder attempt against Folk the Third's life. Let me know your thoughts on this episode and kind of the direction we're going here. And can't forget, we do have that claim on Normandy as well. So until next time, please, as always, hit like, subscribe, check out the links in the description to Patreon, Nexus GG store, and much, much more. Until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I'll talk to you soon.